Hey, what's going on, everybody? For today's video, I, I've been having a lot of questions about um, sort of the process of getting an FFL, um, like some of the financials behind it, and uh, I'm just going to kind of run you guys through. I know I've briefly touched on it in the past, but I'm just going to kind of uh, I'll run you through like the general, uh, you know, from start to finish, uh, how long it took, some of the costs associated with it and whatnot. Um, I got this neat, it's called a lockdown wall um, for the store, so it actually makes a it makes a pretty nice backdrop. I guess I could put a it it stretches the whole wall, but obviously I wanted to you know stationary for the video. Um, basically, I'm just gonna come out and say before I even start talking about like the process, firearms in general are you have to turn over volume. There's really not a whole lot of markup. I'll let you in on the little, you know, the secret. Most Glocks are only about a $60 to $70 markup uh, for a store. Now, some guns are obviously better than others, but for the most part, you have to really turn over volume. Um, you know, selling, you have to sell like a couple guns a day, to be honest, um, to stay profitable. Um, but most ammo is only like a couple dollars a box. I mean, guns are not, they're not very much. So you really have to turn over volume and sell a bunch of guns a day. Um, if you're trying to get into this business for money, you think you're going to, you know, ride off in the sunset with a Lamborghini and, you know, buy a mansion or anything like that, that's not going to happen. Um, you have to be somebody who's, you know, passionate about firearms, loves, like I said, most people that come in here, they... You get people that just want to talk about guns. They're very knowledgeable about guns, and they love having a you know good, healthy conversations. Um, and you know, for the most part, it's a lot of fun. And even like my dad will come in here on weekends and uh, you know help me out, um, just because he again he finds it relaxing. Most people come in, you know, they talk about their collection. You talk about your collection, and just just a lot of fun um, overall. Um, so. F for this video, like I said, I'm going to lay it all out. So for me, um, the reason I, I've always been passionate about firearms, but the reason I really sat down and said, hey, let's get serious about this was because a local shop that we were friends with, um, they were closing their doors. This was at the very end of September of 2023. And it was probably like, I'll just throw out there like September 20th. I don't remember exact dates for a lot of this stuff, but the general ballpark, they said, hey, we're closing. September 20th was the day they're closing. Everything had to be out of the store by October 31st is when the lease was up. So um, he calls us in there. It was like the very one of the last days of September. He called us in, and I've showed you guys before my cabinets. Um, so he gave us the cabinets. Um, he gave us, you know, all the, uh, a lot of like the little equipment and everything. Even like label makers, ID scanners, like little things you really wouldn't even think about. But he'd been in business for a while, so uh, he kind of already went through that trial period. So he really gave us a lot of stuff up front. Um, and again, a lot of this, what you'll hear from like when I start mentioning prices and everything, a lot of this is an upfront cost. And your pocket, you either need a really good loan or your pockets have to be pretty deep. To be able to just get up and running right now in all honesty i probably like where i'm currently sitting have somewhere of the ballpark um probably about fifty sixty thousand dollars worth of inventory that i have to pay for up front to get it in the shop um and it's just it, it's insane and even if you come in here as someone who's used to say like a cabela's or a big retail store you look at this and you're like oh this is barely anything um, I got two cabinets absolutely full to the brim, and I got long guns all over the place. And most people would look at that and say, you don't really have much. And, again, like, I've probably shelled out about $60,000 um, just to get the inventory that I have. So, for, like, a big shop, um, I can only imagine. But, regardless. So, that's what happened, and then we applied for the FFL, and, uh, so the first stage of it was you need a physical location to put on the FFL for where you're going. 
So we had to sign a one-year lease with this, uh, with this uh, space um, in order to be able to put an address on the FFL. You need the, lock, you know, the exact address to include the suite number locked in to apply for the FFL. So theoretically, if something goes wrong and the ATF says, no, we don't want to proceed with this, you're locked into a year lease at wherever you're at. Now, I know some people, um, you can do home-based FFLs. Where I'm at, I couldn't. Um, I tried a couple of years ago, and they wouldn't let me due to like zoning ordinances and everything. But so we locked into a it's a two thousand dollar a month lease. Now, luckily, like I said, I got lucky and found a, a um, concealed carry instructor that was willing to split the building with me. So it's really only a thousand a month. But regardless, about two thousand dollars a month in a lease that you had to lock in way before you could ever open your doors. Um, so. There was the lease. We had to get the cabinets in here. Um, if we weren't lucky enough that they were gifted to us, each of these big cabinets is about $500 a piece. So you're looking at what I currently have, about 1500 in cabinets. Um, you know, printer, laptop. Um, this is not even, ex I'm not even at the point of ordering for guns and ammo and stuff. This is just, you know, beforehand. Um, the building itself, so again, the ATF can technically deny you you have to show that you are serious about this so we spent four thousand dollars on having a gentleman come out and bolster the window has bars the doors have like re they're really secure doors um, you know rekey them and everything it was about five thousand dollars for a company to come and put security cameras an alarm system um, and whatnot um, but we probably spent about ten thousand dollars and security at this place um, and again because FFLs can get broken into so about 10,000 in security um, between the laptops the printer I mean like little little stuff that we weren't even gifted um, it was a couple thousand dollars on top of that so this is bef technically before you even apply for it um, we had at that point shelled out you know 2,000 for the lease you're well over 10 grand in equipment and you know and security and everything and again the sad thing is technically if the ATF comes out and says no um, we can't give you an FFL you're in this really deep at this point so you apply it's a $200 uh, payment and you have to physically mail it mine of course somehow got lost in Guam that's a whole other story I don't know how you go from Delaware to Washington down to Guam but so it took it took me I don't know if it, it took me with getting it lost in Guam about a month. I don't know what the normal process is, but um, it took about a month for me to get the phone call from the ATF agent saying, hey, um, you know, here's a couple more things we, we need, and um, let's set up an interview. Now, again, beforehand, um, you technically don't have to, but it looks really good to have. So I have an established LLC in the state of Delaware. Um, you know, you got to get an EIN number, um, you know, all your LLC documents. You had to uh, buy your business license for the year. Um, you know, little stuff like that, which, again, is more and more cost. A business license in the state of Delaware is about $90 a year. Um, and an LLC filing, I think, was about 100 200 something like that. Um, so, again, by the time the ATF calls you and says, hey, we want an interview, I mean, you're seriously probably looking at I mean, probably close to fifteen thousand dollars that you've shelled out before you can even do business. It's absolutely mind-boggling. So he called me. Um, I had to get a couple more pieces of information for from him or for him. And he was actually—I've heard horror stories, but when they call you, I've heard horror stories of them taking four months to set up an interview. Um, my agent—I've dealt with him a couple of times. He's really cool. Um, he's a really cool, like down-to-earth guy. I got pretty lucky with him, um, but he called me. I gave him the info. He's like, I know it's kind of a short notice, but uh, how's tomorrow sound for an interview? interview? Um, I'm kind of like mentally at that point, like freaking out on the inside. I'm like, oh, I wasn't expecting this. Uh, but so I said yes. So again, you're now about a month have passed, about $15,000 in. They come out. It was about a three-hour interview. He just went over like all the, all the laws you have to follow. Um, you know, city city ordinance, state ordinance, um, 
the process to fill out like 44 73s and 33 10s you know all the forms and the fun the fun stuff um, that's what I tell people when they come in and I'm sitting there you know typing away putting all their information in um, that's what I tell them I'm like yeah you know doing the fun stuff right now um, so at that point he, he did the interview and it was about that was around the end of so I applied at the beginning of October I think it was well the beginning of October was when the shop um, my buddy's shop closed so I didn't I don't think I applied until like actually sent it off until like mid-October is what it was and it was around he was physically here doing the interview with me at the end of November is what it was uh, 2023 and again he wanted to walk around make sure we have a nice secure vault in the back um, for gun storage um, you have you know security cameras I mean technically it's one of those things where you know as long as it looks good they'll pass you but at the same time don't give them a reason so I want security cameras I want you know a nice secure vault anyway so it's one of those things technically if you didn't have any of that stuff they could fail you and they could say no but by having all that th those things in place before the meeting it shows you're serious about it so he said um, you know from there he said it was about it would be about two weeks for the FFL to come in the mail and it did um, it was about mid-December now again if you've been keeping up uh, there's two thousand dollar a month rent um, at this point my Comcast is hooked up there's an electricity bill a gas bill for the building um, and yeah, so there's, there's a lot of bills for this building and I'm just now about I'm two months of paying rent paying electricity paying gas paying the Comcast um, I've shelled out all this money in supplies and cameras and everything and now I have the FFL the problem with my state is you need um, now you need commercial insurance and you needed your FFL before that commercial insurance is another about three hundred dollars a month um, and uh, no I think it's I don't, actually I think it's about 200 a month but still you're shelling out a lot of money um, for now for insurance so I have the FFL but I can't exactly I can't sell yet because I need insurance and then I need a local town of Camden business license um, and then you need your deadly weapon dealer license in Delaware now every state's different but again these are more and more fees and more and more monthly payments I now have to make so um, I mean at this point FFL in hand Camden business license all the licenses are good for me to sell guns and ammo I'm probably well well into this twenty thousand dollars deep now I have the ability to buy the guns and as you said I probably now originally I think I shelled out about forty thousand so obviously you can do the math this is just rough numbers but I think I originally shelled out about forty thousand for the firearms and I've already turned that forty into about sixty thousand dollars worth of firearms um, so I mean it's and we're doing good it's a local small world around here so pretty much everybody knows everybody so word of mouth's great a lot of people know us just in the you know in the community um, so we've been doing good but like I said so you're about 20,000 at least for my situation before you can even buy the firearms and you have to shell out a lot of money for that um, case in point typically um, I think it was by I can't really see it from here I think it was the 19 X I'll, I'll just use this as the example it is about 16 or six hundred dollars excuse me and I spent about five hundred and I think it was five twenty nine to buy it I think off the top of my head so you're really making about eighty dollars but again one handgun I'm still shelling out about five hundred dollars so you're about twenty thousand in supplies we shelled out probably about forty thousand for the initial run of some ammo some guns um, and some like magazines and stuff um, so again you could be I mean I think probably realistically a total of about sixty seventy thousand dollars has been shelled out since uh, since deciding we wanted to do this and it's, it's crazy 
I mean, business is good, and like I said, I enjoy being here. I enjoy doing this a lot more than my other jobs that I've had. Um, but yeah, I mean, just to. Oops, what's that? Oh. I think an argument's happening in the parking lot. Interesting. Um, anywho, yeah, you're really like probably a good. $60,000 before you can even open your door and start selling. It is absolutely crazy. And then you have to hope that there's, you know, good, you know, business stay is good for you to keep, uh, you know, for you to keep turning it over, keep making money. Um, so it just really crazy stuff. I mean, if you're interested in it, like I said, you really have to be passionate about it. Don't expect to become rich off this. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe one day, but I'd like to think that. And I just I'm sitting in a tiny little room. I have to shell out about another. We've got a couple contractors talking about blowing these walls out here to make a nice big room. That's another eight grand for me. Even now, um, I have to buy more cabinets once that's done. I gotta buy either more of this wall or my long gun racks or. So even now, I'm probably a good. Sixty, seventy thousand dollars spent of my own money, and I have to shell out probably another ten, twenty, just to get where I'd like to be. So I mean, it is just—it's it, crazy. And again, I don't—I have like one AR on my wall. Now there's also a Delaware assault weapons ban, so ARs are fair. there's workarounds, but with, with the bullet buttons and whatnot. But I only have one AR on my wall. I really don't have that many. My handgun selection's really good, but like long guns are really lacking. I just bought a, uh, it's the Ruger SFAR um, in 308. That'll look good on this wall. Um, but even then, after shelling out, you're, you're probably gonna be $100,000 by the time I, I get to a nice comfortable spot. And even then, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough firearms to really be like a gun store. Like at the same time, I am, I, obviously I am a gun store, but a lot of people, when you think of a gun store, you think of something big like Cabela's or whatever, whatever you have locally, Bass Pro Shops, whatever. Um, so, I mean, I am a gun store. I'm licensed and everything. But at the same time, you walk in here, it doesn't really feel like one. And the sad thing is, I've shelled out a lot of money already to get to this point. And there's still a lot more to be shelled out and done. Like I said, business is going good. But... If you're serious about doing this or even considering it, you need a lot of money up front. I'll just, I'll tell you that much. And then you have, you need to have a lot of patience. Because like I said, from the day I, you know, I said, hey, look, let's do it. And I mailed it out. It was about two months for me to get the FFL in the mail. Uh, and again, there's a lot of stuff you need to do beforehand for applying. Um, and... Driving by, or if they're gonna pull in, that's Delaware, Delaware Tactical. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll leave you guys there. Like I said, you just have to really enjoy this job to be doing it. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.